trading trades, which shouldn't have been possible with the lead. And in general, MVP is only just trading up. And sometimes, at least in terms of minions, trading down compared to where SKT is going, which should not be the way with how great MVP's early game was. I mean, one of the big things we were talking about was the lack of macro. It seemed like maybe finally MVP had kind of figured it out, but it's starting to fall off. And we say a lot of things like this. Deficient and I take pot shots at MVP. We say lack of macro, and macro is such an all-encompassing term that sometimes it feels like it's just an easy crutch word to say, like, oh, they got bad macro. What does that mean? And I feel like this game, I'm trying to point out what it means because all the areas where MVP could have been trading up, forcing bad decisions, getting vision down, and then making aggressive plays, we saw them all. They were very clear to the viewer to see, but it's just so many gaps, so many things where they made the wrong decision or weren't proactive enough that really altogether encompasses this umbrella turn of bad macro because they need to be earning more with their lead. Otherwise, the lead didn't matter. Well, top lane turret finally going down mid. Very much under threat here for MVP. As SKT gets closer and closer to tying up that gold. And if I asked you how they tied up the gold, what would you tell me? That's the thing. It's like, you know, you've obviously been watching this game as well. What did SKT do to earn gold and get back into the game? It's not like there was a huge fight that they won. Those people remember those. They took some turrets. They took some turrets. You know, they kind of just did normal things and got a big lead. Or uh, got a big... Okay. Imagine this. this is uh, the MVP Baron. We've seen this before. Yeah, I mean, the scuttle grab just expiring. MVP will pull off of this one. Not going to go for the 50-50 like they so often opt in for. Jan said in an interview, he loves the rush of blood from contesting for barons. They often opt into a 50-50. Oh, this is comes down, finds three members. Wolf gets an hour in on a bank, keeping him safe. And Faker still hasn't taken much. In fact, it's just up trading the damage onto ADD. He flashes away. Damage coming up from Peanut. Piercing arrow comes through. He goes low, takes the blast going over the wall to safety. So he will get out with his life. But Abyssal Voyage actually coming in on the backside. Flashboard gets the tongue lash as they will take him down. Flag and drag away. Blast Cone's not there, should just be one more smack. Slows him up yet again with a tongue, goes back forward, but just hands the kill over to Faker. And this is all with Huni not even interested in the fight. ADD solo engages because Huni was out of position. No one was even in screens over. This is the sort of thing where people say, I engage, where was the backup? The backup couldn't get to the fight by the time it was free DPS down by four people. So they lose a member and they lose the bot lane in a turret. And now the gold's just evened up just like that. This is definitely like the stages of grief being engaged in a League of Legends game. I, we started off with happiness, to be clear. Yeah. That's not even stage grief, but I think the grief stage is starting to come, Achilles. This really is like KT and their their big dip that they had in spring, where it was just like really good early game, always in the lead, and then it slips through their hands. <laughs> I guess the only difference, I think it's a really good analogy, the only difference would be that KT would be doing something crazy Rambo and die, right? That's not even what happened here. They just kind of chilled. They would have kept on that Baron. <laughs> They would have kept on the Baron, or they would have, like, score would have died contesting Krugs for some reason. <laughs> Instead, this was just, well, the game kind of seemed to enter a lull, and SKT got some free objectives. Like, it wasn't like MVP overforced in this game, as Faker doesn't give any cares about MVP. Nope, he's just going to toss out the calling. It's a little bit of damage. Chain of Corruption. Very close to connecting. Will not find it, however. Two ultimates tossed out, but they will be sending Beyond back to the base as they just maintain pressure. In the mid and soon to be bottom lane, ADD. Starting to bring that one back up, but who needs their success? My favorite thing about this game is that let's assume SKT win, which at this point is looking likely. If you're a team that's VOD reviewing for one of your matches, I'm not talking about MVP or SKT's coaches, I'm talking about, let's say, someone in a different league. You can actually look to MVP's play to a certain point and learn from it, even if they go on to squad the lead. They played the early game so well, so textbook. They deserve all the plaudits for the early game. So they still have done something in this game for a, pa a passage, which is very, very good and something to learn from. But then there was that moment, that click where it all changed. Is now Faker's just chilling in inner turrets, I guess. Yep. Let me try to take this one out. Goes low, flashes away from the shockwave. So maybe overstepping his boundaries a little bit, but... Playing with fire as per usual. Gets Beyond. himself out safely. Beyond soloed another cloud drake down. Sorry, another ocean drake down. Which not going to be a massive value, but at least Faker wasn't able to trade it for an inner turret, so it's something for the side of MVP. Every bonus they can get now that they're behind in gold is something they'll take. And Baron is so often their playground. Still is potentially something that can re get them a lead, but. Remember, they were deciding everything, and now they're hoping against hope for a Baron. Which, remember that Huni's in the bottom lane, so if you start that up, he might just be knocking down an inhib, and 
SKT already showed that they're comfortable with a 4v5. Down to walk up. No control. Now in their own side of the jungle. We were kind of criticizing them for not having advanced vision, and now they don't have defensive vision. Game has changed, and now advanced vision will be a waste, given that MVP don't feel like they're strong enough to be looking for picks around the enemy side of the jungle game, being almost exclusively played around the control wards, which are still there. And now SKT, they're looking to duo Baron. Yeah, I mean, AV's down at the bottom. And they need to respond fast. He does have a TP. Really they need to get that now. He's down about half HP. Nobody's in there. The pain's starting to come out. Yeah, the scrying They've already lost it. Comes through, but the Baron will just go over. Can they get some exit kills? going to be the question. AD arrives. So there's another close. It locks it too. And Hootie goes low right off the bat. It's a shockwave connect. The Baron comes through for Wolf. He tries to keep, tries to keep alive. Flash away from the Cassiopeia. Into the drive rush. Gets a body block from the ace of the hole. They trade one back, AD goes down, they lose Wolf. One for one, the Baron to SKT. And SKT would be happy they didn't lose the buff on Hooney in particular, given that he has teleport and still playing side lanes. Good decision from SKT to rush down the Baron. MVP far too slow at understanding what could happen. I didn't see the blue trigger cooldown, but I'll assume it was up and not used. I can't see it here either. SKT made the right call to finish. You know, teams can definitely, MVP's one of them, make bad decisions when it comes to closing the Baron, but MVP was never going to react in time. Two-man petrifying gaze and disengage means only one death. Could certainly have been two if they were able to focus down members earlier, but traded one for one. Baron picked up for SKT. Weird game where if you had watched for the first 10 minutes and turned it off, had to go to school, had to pop a bagel and get to work, be surprised to come back and find out that MVP is looking very, very unlikely to be winning game one. Yeah. And I mean, even so, I mean, the thing that we, we said coming into this, we didn't expect the early game to go as well as it did, but we did say that MVP have to look competitive, and they did for those yeah. first you know, 10 some odd minutes. But is that good enough to say that this is really an improvement because they just let everything fall out of their hands? I think absolutely it is. Uh, I think you could hold your head high about a passage of play for MVP, and even though they won two games against Jyn Air, it was very early in the season, it was a rough series. They played super well against SK Telecom T1 for a passage of the game. So at least there's something to build on. You can say, well, our early game got a lot better. Let's build on that rather than just everything is not working. All our picks are not working. This was really good from MVP. So you're right. It is scattered emotions where there probably will be some frustration. But at least there was elation about something. And given MVP's run recently of six losses in a row, not always to the strongest teams. Ever8 was included in that six games. And again... MVP schedule actually gets way easier after this series because they've just played Samsung, KT, and SKT, the other three teams going to rip rivals in a row. MVP posturing forward, trying to hold on to this inner turn in the top lane. In the meantime, Hooney, he's just going to be running his Baron empowered minions straight into that in him turret. We'll be able to get there in time to stop this from going down by the look of it, but he's still will get quite a bit of damage in it. Faker, well, he's just going to solo down that mid. Inner, getting that last one taken away. Cataclysm coming down in on the Hooney, trying to fire off on the damage. This voyage comes through from Wolf there to back him up with the Devour and keep him alive. Hooney didn't even use the Seraph Shield, has that available. No Zonia's yet, but coming soon. And SKT, they see multiple members bot lane. Yep. Easy free inner turret in the top lane. Looking to close the game during this Baron buff push, but for now, respectful of a turn from MVP. Yeah, the two. One, two, helping get those turrets. Now just swapping things up a little bit as Hooney will loan yet again in that bottom lane, just trying to finish off that turret. Takes a little bit of damage from beyond, but he's got plenty of life seal to keep himself sustained. And nothing approaching a team fight at this phase in the game. Six item team fights would have been a way for MVP to again have a big lead. They shouldn't have needed those given how the early game went. Bot lane, Hooney's engaged on again. Yeah, doesn't have the flash. It's pretty low, Ace in the hole comes down. But still going to be okay. Max Cullen coming through. Dangerously low throws out the cast. Knocks him into the wall. And it's actually going to be the proc off the jungle head. And it takes him down. Piercing arrow not finding beyond. He jumps back with a collateral damage to keep himself alive. But barely so. And SKT they might just have to get out of this base. We'll see how long they want to stick around for. I have ever seen someone died or a running echo proc. But it was actually. Well, picked up the kill, like you say, onto Max. He didn't get burned because of the shield coming through from Ariana. SKT three in the mid lane. Cassiopeia waiting for the minion wave to come in bot lane. Trying to break the base in as many ways as possible. For now, going to pull back from mid lane, so not trying to divide and conquer too much, as Faker didn't get the memo. No, nope, he's just still sticking around. He's got Wolf there, he's fine. I'll just open up this uh, inhib for the taking later. Couldn't quite finish off that bot inhib turret, though, for her, so. The pressure at least stopped that from going down, but MVP are just slowly... Watch Faker here is, uh, well, no one has ever questioned how big of a man Faker is. Doesn't need to be Sindra to talk about... His spheres as he goes in, turns on to multiple people, almost gets a double kill. 
And watch this, a runic echo uh -oh. came in just a second ago. That was cool. Oh, MVP. Going to be trying to get this Infernal. Ward comes over the wall. It goes low. Not going to get the takeaway there. That would have been a pretty crazy one by Faker. Seal with a W. Ardently blazed. Just all like 70 damage that it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's longer range than an auto attack, so I guess that's why he did it. Seal with a dragon with just the tip. Of the Ardent Blaze? Yeah. Well, I, I've seen Ardent Blaze kill someone, and this game I saw my first Runic Echo kill. So we're seeing new things, at least. Draft was crazy. Now should be a well held in the laning phase, but now it's just a split push monster, understandably. Definitely a game where you can feel great about the adaptive helm if you're Jarvan, just trying to not die to the 100,000 Twin Fangs. Who might still win out on damage dealt this game from just Twin Fanging a million times into the Jarvan during laning phase? Yeah, I mean, it's probably one of those ones where Hooney beats out uh, the likes of Bang with the Bears. Oh, Faker on the Lucian. I think Faker has probably done more damage to the Bears, but uh, you never know. Sometimes it's pretty deceptive. ADD, it's a flag and drag with Faker. Try to tag him. When your flash is up as Lucian at level 18 after all the bust animations, you really do not have to respect gap close very much. Feeling super confident to skirt in and out of fights, given how short the cooldown will be on the Relentless Pursuit. Now just SKT doing their standard play, pushing three lanes, waiting for multiple members to show one lane, and trying to take out a turret. When you're respecting ADD enough not to walk up and auto-attack the turret once, it would take it down. Should be able to get it here as ADD's attention is being drawn towards this top side of the map where Inhib is under threat of falling. Faker's still sitting around in that mid lane. Team fight, would, one. Team fight would end the game, so that's why Huni started to walk up. But he didn't have a minion wave, so it wasn't in a huge rush, rush to approach the turret. It still hasn't knocked down that. And SKT say, well, MVP haven't got anyone near Baron in a while. Let's take Baron. Yep, yeah, spawning down three seconds. Lucian's not there, so this won't be as fast a rush as possible. It does allow MVP to walk up. Kind of split, split attention here from SKT. Faker just more focused on his blue than necessarily just looking for a pick around the objective. Well, it seems like they're not going to be fully committing in yet. So SKT will go ahead and peel off that one. So not making any rash decisions. The recall's coming through. MVP, do they try to rush this? Where they're at in the game, taking a roll of the dice is probably preferential to just randomly losing the game to a bit of poke in three different lanes, so definitely be something you could respect, even if it probably wouldn't be effective. Purchases come in, everyone's pretty decked on the side of SKT. We haven't really said Maha's name all game. Just kind of farmed, and game was decided around him. He, uh, yeah. He was the faker. He loaded in. I mean, the Faker had nothing much going on in the early game while the rest of his lanes were having trouble. Yeah, and then he finally got the kill. And then Maha kind of just never really got going, just <laughs> farmed. Well, SKT pushing back in. No Baron, still just, just, just going to force up the base. Take down yet another inhib turret. All of them now going to be falling. As he still remains in the bottom side of the map, trying to get that inhib down. Took down to about half HP. But now, do they go for the Baron? Showing so much respect here, SK Telecom T1. Ariana has started to hit that point where she can get scary. Doesn't have a void stuff, but the magic resist isn't massive on the side of SKT. Just some hex drinkers and no magic mantles. So, showing due respect to the Ori and the potential for team fight. Someone could be deleted very fast. If they had this information, oh they might God. be a bit more hasty given how much gold MVP is sitting on. Faker's cold lead over Ian right now. Well, the worrying thing is that SKT's up 10,000 and MVP actually have 8,000 in the infantry. So it's an even bigger lead. Oh, Probably about go. 12 or 13. Start up in onto the Baron TP coming through here from Hooney. I've seen this movie before, Achilles. Baron going low. Can Pina go and still goes to the pit? Takes it right away, right out of the grasp of MVP. That might have just been their hopes. Being shut out for this game. Faker coming up with a triple kill. Looking for a bit more beyond. Goes over the back side of the wall, but the rest of the squad, it's just going to be Wolf and Peanut finishing off this Graves. They're looking for the win. 38 and a half minutes, just about there on the clock. As they will push in the base, they will finish us off. And we finally got the League of Legends random sampler. Because everything happened in this game. SKT fell behind. MVP played a super great early game. Then kind of had the game go prototypically SKT. They got control. We even ended with a Baron Steel. Of course we had to have a Baron Steel. It's an MVP game. We got everything, so you have to smile. Everyone got a bit of what they're looking for in competitive League of Legends. And just like that script, we didn't need to read the last page because SKT...
They always win. Yeah, they do. Rough start. And yeah, like I kind of thought Baker doing all of the damage here in game number one with that Lucian, the Cassiopeia, surprisingly pretty far behind. Well, maybe it'd be a bit closer than that. Yeah, we didn't get to watch Baker in the early game where all the action was being played through top lane. Cooney dying multiple times in laning to execute it to the Baron. That's what it's suggesting. Uh, I mean, perhaps. They did not have a Baron pet. Baron owned SKT in that particular artwork. The what if surreal. Yep. Like what if MVP was good. Back with zero CS. Like that was definitely a once in a lifetime I'm against a top five mid laner in the world in the past three years. Like we're talking about a super mid laner in Maple. Well, rough times overall for those who face Faker. That's why you go to NA. You might make it to Worlds and you avoid Faker. Just get uh, tilted out of there. Oh, beyond walking into the jungle. There's an award. Keeps all's well for MVP at the moment. Just that slight little dip in the top side of the map is uh, pretty much the only blemish as ADD is just slightly behind. Beyond puffing, showing a mid lane. It's gonna help push if Faker fish for an all in. Top lane. See, Untara is running the fervor, which has been pretty common on Fioras and Grasp there for ADD. Itemization is gonna be fun to track. Usually it seems like the best value is gotten from just going damage as ADD on the Jarvan. It feels like the people that try to rush tank go for a nerf. Where he was, that perhaps he had gone back to base. So, decent amount of information gathering here for the side of SKT, just keeping everybody safe at the moment. It's been eerily standard compared to game one, where at this point MVP already had targeted down Hooney twice. We expect there to be pretty evolving pressure around Untara as Fiora with ward coverage once she hits at least a TM at, but you know, more hopefully a TM at Invade and start to do Fiora things. We've all felt it in solo queue. ADD has time to leave lane and just get the vision of the ward in the brush, so no opportunity cost there given where the wave was. A, lo a lot of people do. I'm sure there are people that feel very strongly about this, but just one man's opinion. That one has the... Uh... The nostalgia factor for sure for me. The third one has the, the hard string. The, yes. Oh, oh God. boy. No spoilers for Toy Story 3. <laughs> that, that one just makes you want to cry. In, in the, in the way all, intended. Yeah. I mean, they're all great. So. It's hard to put them in order. Because it's like, well, they're all so good, but I guess this. Here's a good one. What's the second best Disney animated movie sequel? So Toy Story 2 probably consensus the best. The hazards on the Krugs and also and quite I didn't quite catch that, so could be wrong on that, but they seem to at least smell a rat in the bot lane. But he can up around Untara if he gets a solo kill on Jarvan, then any potential team fight weaknesses compared to MVPs will go away and even then both teams are pretty stacked for a team fight outside of Untara being prototypically better in the split push, so can be really fun to track. If he use it in either direction, SKT could potentially win a team fight when he hard committed, but during all the commotion, MVP picked up the first kill, AD lived for a long time, never went down till by the end where he didn't die anyway. But in the meantime, beyond, someone had to get caught. Bang could have looked for an aggressive flash at many different moments, never used it. So just went for the safest possible play. Still has that summoner lead, and that could be big because we see MVP returning bot lane but no summoners on either of the supports on either side. Yeah, the turret very close to going down, so one more pick here for SKT. Good. Very well lead to that first brick. Coming through and extending that lead even further. Well, it's about 1.6 thousand up for SK Telecom T1. Rift Herald just dissipates with no one picking it up. The winner is SKT, I would say, in that regard. It feels like their comp can be undone by Rift Herald. More than that of MVP. So for now, 15 minutes in, the window to take it's closing, and SKT have a control ward on the top side and also complete vision of it. Chain of Crystalline Arrow available here for Bang if they want to try to go for an opening. ADD had entered bot lane with teleport up and not died. And they could have got a big advantage, but it didn't happen, so not many, no real point to dwell on that for now. The item's starting to come in. Rod of Ages was at a very fast time. 
Pat Ryan and Human Song. I was going to say, there were several throughout the years, but sure. we all know which one you're talking about. Yep. For some of MP's losses, I probably wanted to hear that song. I feel like you have too many friends in the world when you're on a losing streak. The fans are against you. Also, a lot of people, of course, making the obvious, well, they're representing us at Rift Rivals. Jeers about MVP. Gun was spotted, trying to provide coverage. We could definitely see a big 5v5 fight around the very precarious spot lane out of turret. Yeah, it just feels like that could be the tipping point here for SKT to really get the ball rolling. He has so much of a vision advantage. Control ward on the top side, double control ward around the bot side. They're basically waiting for MVP to show their hand, and then they feel like they have the tonic, whatever the situation. So yes, lead starting to be opened up by Antara. Well, the shockwave comes through, but it's just going to whiff. Baker, no flash required this time around. Keeps himself safe. Just great juking from the master. He knows those ranges is better than most. He was hitting some amazing max range shockwaves at MSI. It's happening, but he's going to find out in a second when it expires. It's not the spring season Rift Herald. There will be a fight over this. MVP will not want to give it up for free. Both junglers and mid laners are here. Ma Bang can't be there. He's bot lane. Yeah, Ma is roaming all the way up and... Max is going to be quite nearby. 5,000 HP remaining on this Rift Herald. Faker throwing down the Miasma. Do they just leash this? Yeah, SKT will be smart to leash it because MVP had to leave bot lane. They would have lost the turret eventually anyway. Basically, they're playing with everything and it's released. It doesn't heal back up. So MVP do get Rift Herald. So we'll see where they choose to use it. Beyond has it. He's wearing it right now. I mean, everybody up towards the top side of the map might be the prime target. They showed their hand early to the MVP with those control wards. SKT knew what they wanted to do, but they do end up giving up an objective that we pinpointed as pretty important to launching MVP into this game. You know, a lot of pressure around this bottom side of the map opened up for SK Telecom. Very good timing with them with the Infernal Drake spawning at 8 seconds. So maybe they picked up, picked that up as an answer, but... There's no contest coming through from SKT. Fiora went back, finished up Black Cleaver, shopping trip for Bang. And MVP do gain, you know, a very consequential dra Drake in the Rift Herald. And in terms of neutrals, apart from the one turret, neutrals have gone to MVP. Yeah. Some interesting decision making here from SKT. Not even an explosive cask or a barrel thrown over the wall for Blank to try to take that one away. But hard to criticize because you look at SKT's comp and you're like, they can team fight, but they're not built to team fight. It is a Fiora who, diving into the back line against Oriana Bard, probably not going to find a lot of value until she's at three, four items with the Guardian Angel. So. It's thinking better of it and focusing on what they do do very well, which is a lane pressure game. Vision quite shallow at the moment for Untara, but he's still working towards his core item, so you can only really be picky about Fiora's split push vision when the two item power spike is online. You can see just a plenty from the side of MVP, so keeping that turn safe continuously. Don't want to give another one over to SK to Telecom. Cold lead hasn't grown too much for them. Two and a half, 2.6 thousand gold at the moment. The funny thing about this game is this is a coma game. This is very controlled. SKT not taking any risks. It's kind of the antithesis of game one in many ways. Can you like list all the things that had happened in game one by 22 minutes? We'd probably run out and take a breath at some point. Uh, it's been very standard beyond. We'll just put it in the mid lane. No interrupt available for Faker. We've seen two interrupts so far on Rift Heralds. We saw one from Rakan against KT Rolster. Uh, yesterday. Bang and Wolf going to be making an appearance as they try to hold on to this turret. Charge comes through, knocks it down pretty low. They will be able to finish off this Rift Herald before the turret falls. So what does this get on your scoreboard, Papa Smithy? About it's about, about three and a half. Yeah. The lane choice was good. The timing was a bit too transparent because all the great wards had come in from SKT. They knew where Beyond was. So MVP were controlled in their Rift Herald usage. It's Faker's hit by the Tempered Fate. Yeah, comes down this time. They have the Cosmic Binding into the Shockwave plus collateral damage. He will go down. As MVP puts a second kill you on know the what? board. I'll extend the window for the Rift Herald and give it a 7 out of 10. We'll include the back end of the Rift Herald play. Alright, well they're looking for a bit more than that. Maybe that tier 2. Bang. They're taking away that outer turn in the top side of the map. And there's just so much damage from MVP. They will be finding this. They can all exit safely. But you can see what SKT are doing. They were not going to call Untara in that situation. Bang was already top side. It's a good job by MVP. Decisive when they needed to be decisive. We'll see if they lose an inner turret for it. My first instinct is no. There's not many minions here in an ADR. He has the wraparound coming through. And now, bang. Actually, very far overextended. They do have to peel back. He has, what's that blast cone taken out? So, he has a fast avenue of approach via the river. You can see the rest of MVP on wards in the enemy jungle. So, another one of those games where wards in the enemy jungle has bought SKT a lot. 
Ignite, Temper Fade is available, but Antara's not going to get clipped by it. So actually, big overcommitment there from Max. Just throws out everything that he had and doesn't come up. Shady, because he hadn't seen Repose, didn't want to trade flashes and then just EQ afterwards. Didn't seem to have the confidence. And Max and ADD critically did not have the same duo synergy that we saw from ADD and beyond to really open up that lead for MVP in game one. Complete disconnect from Max and ADD needed to be communicating better about what the goal was because Max was going in. He used everything, including his Flash and Ignite, and ADD was having none of it. So, bit of a worrying sign there for MVP. So, Antara barely escaping. You can see just how one-sided those exchanges still are in favor of ADD. We wait for more items to come through for that Fiora. Close to Ravenous Hydra, so will not be the tankier route from Antara this time. Thinks he wants to go three items with a Guardian Angel and be fine. Three item power spike, very, very powerful with the Guardian Angel. That's almost certainly going to be the next item. Take another look at that as they just keep duking it out. He's got mana this time. He's got, he's getting those weaknesses as well. Like a drag will take ADD out to safety. He doesn't have to use the flash, but uh, just like that, things are going pretty well for Indara. And now he's got pressure on the center turret. That's how the vision's going for the solo kill. Oh, but this might have just been the bait here from ADD. Cataclysm comes down. Indara locked in, will fall. Very nicely done, ADD having faith in a scene to collapse, but SKT on the other side of the map, Wolf and Faker start to try to duo this out, Blake now arriving, can take up the Baron, but it will peel back. Seems like he got the call to go for an all-in while his team tried to sneak Baron, as he isn't engaged. The body slam, but the explosive cask is just going to do nothing but knock them away, so no Beyond isolation on Maha. Yeah, they do get the flash away. Looked like a double, but it wasn't necessary for Maha, was able to net out. Beyond did have to flash, so still something. He looked comical from Montara, but he wanted to make a play and have his team take Baron. Now Baron's once again on the menu, but this time it's MVP. We've seen this before. This time it's Blank, though. I mean, it's 10 seconds on the clock there. Judges have the TP available, but the Baron's going to go low. The Pepper Bay comes out, locks up Blank, which means Beyond can get it. They take the magical journey out to safety, and they find some kills on the escape. Looking for Max. Not everybody comes Max. in, not going to find a stun. He will go down. But it seems like SKT might not get more than that. Invisible Voyage comes through, and immediately they just rip right through Bang. Wolf going low, Ace in the hole, he's going to have to flash to the other side of Blank to keep himself alive. It's a bit too risky. They will find a tier 1 turret in the mid lane. But Baron over to MVP, and they're keeping this game close. Yeah, super interesting passage of play. I actually thought that was a really good force on the Baron from MVP. And even though it was so obvious and transparent, SKT had full information. The reason you do that is that SKT already showed their hand with a turret dive while Ontara had teleported up. They knew they would be to split across the map. ADD wouldn't be able to stand up to the Fiora. So the thought process was, let's make it happen here. Trust on the ultimate from Max. And this is the only spot we're going to get Baron realistically in the next 15 minutes. They get the Baron. They largely get out. Only their support is given up. So when it comes to Baron forces, specifically around a team like MVP, who have mismanaged Baron before, this is great. And the Tempered Fate is beautiful. Yeah. Really solid by Max. I mean, funny. Bang and blank. Getting rid of that Smite, getting rid of that damage from the Ash. As far as I understand, the interaction with Smite is that you can always use it unless you're suppressed. So the fact that he was altered out of range of Smite was probably actually pretty important. I'm not 100% clear how Stasis interacts there, but my first thought is the Smite would still have been available since it's not a suppression effect. Regardless, well done by Max, out of range. Yeah, I'm not sure. In that situation. I feel like you can't... You can smite under anything other than suppress. Okay. Is how it's always been explained. The uh, stasis effect is kind of an interesting one. I'm sure someone can correct us. Please do. But uh, regardless, he was in stasis out of the AOE anyway, so smite wasn't it. Well, nicely played by MVP all the same. By themselves. Just about tied in gold versus SKT. But now they have to use that Baron. They have to, just like in game one where they had to use their early lead, they need to force SKT to group as five, which with teleport down is perhaps more the percentage play for SKT, but this is where MVP need to be a death ball. They need to make something happen. They have Jarvan with flash up and Orianna sitting at three items. It's time to go. You know, we're, we're absolutely jamming the foot on the accelerator. They just play side lanes and AD crucially doesn't even have the Baron bluff himself. They will knock anywhere near the big advantage they needed to justify how much they put into taking the bat. For now, getting those waves prepped in the bottom and top sides of the map. And sweeping through the jungle of SKT on this lower half. So maybe looking for a pick if Max can set something up that's have the tempered fate ready to go yet again. Flash down on the Gragas, also down on the Tom Kench. Tom Kench would be a great target to pick up first. 
playing as a solid unit here as MVP, not looking to get picked off one at a time. As I say that beyond. Nice from the Rift Tower, but it's still away the red. That does take this out. Waiting for the minion wave to be brought up. So, so far, so good from ADD. Dark Power minions starting to come through. He has been thrown down by Faker, but you can see SKT just have to concede this turret. They have their other minion waves in good spots, so they're not getting pressured across the map. Next Drake is a good spawn aside of MVP, but still a while away. Having pressure in this drag in this jungle will largely be cleared out now that the duo clearing mission of Blank and Wolf can happen. And there's no reason for MVP to be here because why would SKT push up there? Yeah. There's no objective. The dragon's not for a while, but it's that one. Actually All right. Be this around. time. Looking for Faker. Advantage of getting pop flashes away. Cataclysm comes down now, locked into the pit. They knock him back in with the shockwave. Wolf. Unable to get close up for the Devourer, and now MVP with that cast would be taken out. First brush is too conservative, the second one much better, and they want more here to MVP. They're gonna be looking for the in hand, that's gonna be explosive cast coming through as Bianca gets knocked in. Wolf going low, pops a great held shield, but there's just not much left of him. He will go down, collateral damage from beyond takes him out. Now the inhibitor line is going to be broken by MVP. Untara not even able to continue the split push, bang, nor himself in the mid lane will be recalling. Untara will continue as he cancels that one out, seeing MVP retreat. But an inner turret, all that SKT can get picked up after losing two members of their squad and an inhibitor. Yeah, really nicely decisive play coming through from MVP. So I think we didn't see in game one, caused them to lag behind. All SKT can do is pick up an inner turret, just not in any way going to be of similar value. Stuff from MVP. They, they drafted to engage. They engaged when they needed to. Faker moved up too fast. Maha Q opening up with the ultimate there. Spell shield is down. Engage was pretty straightforward. Now MVP once again have the lead in this game. Their comp is also more straightforward to pull off than SKT's. So we'll see if they can find a way to come back in this series. Because again, it'll be a first game win over SKT in their history since forming back in Challenger. Not including the spiritual successor days of Samsung when they were the MVP organization way back when. It's a bit awkward there, given that Samsung is the old MVP, and MVP is just the new MVP. No correlation. Even then, it's kind of tenuous for the Samsung <laughs> team, right? Because they lost all their players. Just a headache. I still have trouble calling the Rocks Tigers the Rocks Tigers. Yeah. That one feels bad. They're playing a second series. Hooray! Wait, are they? No. It's even better. It's Tomorrow. BBQ. Tomorrow, though. Yeah, we get BBQ today. Sorry, I forgot. It's ever eight BBQ. Alright, MVP pushing up. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait to get done with this boring game. We can have an exciting series. Well, we might have excitement soon. We even have three games if MVP can continue to play smart. This time, Tempered Fate's well disengaged by SKT. They're yeah, not gonna find anything off that, but the turret still will be taken down. MVP was able to brute force it. They, they ping out. Untara on a ward. Infernal Drake spawning in 10 seconds, but Baron and Infernal both spawning around similar times. MVP want both. They're not even going to be willing to give up an Infernal Drake here to SKT. Looks like they might start with the easy objective, even though a lot of their vision is placed around Baron. I mean, they're just tiptoeing back and forth in the mid lane, singling, okay, as soon as you go over to that dragon, we're starting up the Baron, and you know how quickly we're going to be able to take this. Feels like SKT is trying to come down a corridor, and MVP is saying, are you going left? Are you going right? Which way are you going? Well, they decided to go right, this time with the Baron started. The Ash Arrow comes through, does lock up ADD and Atara, can he made it a TP in. 2,000. Going low, Blank, can he make it into the pit this time? Body slams in, the spike comes through way too early, gets taken by beyond in the end. One kill picked up as Ian does go down. But they pursue forward. Atara can get locked up by the Cosmic Binding. Go over the wall. Still Want chasing this. in, they're trying to take down Maha, will be dashing forward in onto the Ash. And they should be able to finish them off. Now the base, they're going to have to go back because that is under siege. Super Creeps pushing into the bottom side, looking to take out that first Nexus turret. Yes, yeah, so Baron buff is claimed by MVP. Only two people die. And as you mentioned, Achilleo, it's a crucial factor that someone has to defend. So they can't really take multiple objectives against the run. For now, they're actually just giving up the base. The minions are leashing between two. And Tara, only one to return, doesn't have teleport up. Bang may get SKT and Infernal Drake. Looking but for even it. then, Beyond's here. He's going to get spotted. Yeah, Beyond is nearby. Blank, should be able to get some away. There we go. We see the spike come down. As they start chasing in, Beyond goes low, but there's no Abyssal Voyage there from Wolf to pursue any further. Smite up. Quick draws over the wall to keep himself safe. We should get a replay. Still three buffs of that Baron. We should get a replay of the Baron. 
The smite looked hilariously early, but I don't think that was just an epic fail. I think it was one of those mind games. We've seen so many interesting Baron takes where teams will just wait and then instant DPS it down or DPS it down at a random number, not just at a 2,000, for example. So while it's easy just to say lol blank and maybe he deserves that, he just thought that was his best chance to pick up a smite and ended up being super off beyond picking it up instead. Play continues to be very MVP focused here as given all the advantages they've been able to get grouped, SKT's plan of split push with Antara has been thwarted for the last 15 minutes or so where it's been a relevant game plan. Yeah. It's not been going well. Fortunately for SKT, don't lose those Nexus turrets, but they're still dangerously low, so Antara's going to have to take a move to that bottom side of the map for a while. Doesn't have teleport still, so it still is 4v5 at best for SKT. Seems like he's going to go ahead and start cutting away from the minion wave. We'll be pushing in, and actually it's going to be the inhibitor respawning now at the bottom side of the map, but another one may be taken up top as that turret just goes down very swiftly, and MVP fiercely pushing forward. ADD. Doors in the back line. That flag in Antara, yeah. Fight time. in from the back. Once the cast comes through, it's just knocking away the Graves and that Bard. When the Explosive Cast was down, and also the Ash Arrow was down, suddenly things get a lot more complicated for SKT. Tara still cheating around the side. Trying to keep MVP's focus on him. Guardian Angels on MVP. I don't want it super tanky to how big this Fiora is, but oh, it's already... So, sorry, the Nexus... Sorry, the Inhibitor. <laughs> Nexus turret. Inhibitor is very, very low. It will be taken out. And in the end, an MVP. Yeah, they're just going to be happy with that one. Overstay from MVP. We'll have to set up to find a way to take down the bot lane inhibitor, which has respawned. Baker walks up. He's been caught a couple of times. Yeah, he's got to be careful here, even with the Banshee's Veil. It's very easy to get popped, just like that. Standard comes down. And he is vulnerable. And now MVP. Let me complete this one. I mean, every time Montara shows, they know he doesn't have teleport, so they're so safe to walk up. On the backside of the fight now. Engage tool not up yet from Ash. Grab this ult is up. Still needs to be perfectly placed here from Blank. MVP smell and engage. Still hasn't started. We're gonna pop in ADD. Can he make it get over to the <laughs> portal? Yes, he can. Takes a magical journey out. Dar will be jumping in on the map. And he picked his golden apparently. Down the redemption. That's gonna be the pit coming oh, through. Oh, misses Max. from Ariana. Yeah. Will still die. Ash Arrow. How much does Mega One? This wants to launch. Flashes in. That's gonna be redemption coming down. Maha picked off right off the bat, ADD flag and dragging out of the Cataclysm, keeping multiple members locked in, but still in such a bad spot. Takes the blast code over the wall, but it seems like it's just a matter of time for SKT to be able to take him out. He's going to go bot lane. He wants to try and run towards the inhibitor. That's where he wants to attack. Clearly, he's not going to be able to pick that one up. We'll be chased down from Antara. Big engage from SKT. Baker happy to flash in on the Cassio. This is hilarious. ADD is just so very annoying on the J4 at the moment. Blank will be coming nearby and just try to pinch him in. He's wasting a lot of time. I, I mean, this could be time that SKT is split pushing, but they have to be worried if they leave him alone, he'll be taking that inhibitor. And because the Baron or the Drake is not spawning soon, the fact that he's dead for 50 more seconds while there's four people up isn't even relevant. It's not going to force a 5v4. When he respawns, he has teleport up, so... I think it was actually expertly done and had to be responded to by Antara. And look how annoying that it's going to be in the mid lane. Like, Zen can't even get a push going. SKT are not the sort of team to let three inhibitors die in front of their face without engaging. So they go for this big play. Any pick is golden. And the hula hoop on the ultimate here. Because of the repose coming through. Means Orianna ult is down. Abyssal Voyage is spawned. And Faker says, yep, I'm a man. Flashes in for the Miasma. And it turns in as huge damage at this point, obviously. They end up getting four for zero over the course of this as... ADD lives for another one minute of game time, which is a long time, 60 seconds. But they don't get any more, and all SKT can say is, well, you know, we know that some tools will be down from MVP, but it's not that many. You think of that fight, and you're like, well, they must have got flashes. If you look, Ariana has flash. Caitlyn has flash. The next ult, or initiation from SKT, needs to be on point because of where MVP is in the game. And there still is plenty of tools for MVP to try and turn around. I mean, even ADD has his flash available. So, was not required to keep himself alive for that long. So, very impressively done. SKT keep a lead, but at this point, it just really doesn't matter for much. Fortunately, Antara does have the TP, so can be a threat in the side lanes. Flag and Drag comes through, Tempered Fake thrown down. They find Baker. Can he get out of here alive? No flash available. The Devourer is there from Wolf as Blank goes forward. Gets the Explosive Cast coming down, and now Lazar joining in the fray. Flag and Drag through with the Cataclysm. Thrown in, just locking up Wolf and Blank for as long as possible. No one going to die. 
Uh, flashes used out there. Summoner spells used on both sides. They have to back away also. SKT have to deal with Super Minions pushing in bot They lane. got the TP. That's what they got, which is still something to speak of. They only had to use the flash on Ian. So Oriana certainly will be a little bit more tenuous in the next fight, but you can see big objectives spawning in 20 seconds. SKT need to play pretty specifically now. Because otherwise, Baron will be a free objective for MVP with Ontara still, what, four minutes away from having his teleport in bot lane. And Beyond understands, they're just walking straight over. MVP want to brute force this one. Cataclysm may be down. Oriana ult down for a couple more seconds, but they want it instantly. Yeah, so let's get down to the wires. A trap line being thrown up here. What was by Ma -ma, do? Trying to lock them out. Blank already nearby. Tries to go forward, locked down on the max. Needs the seal if he can get it, throws out the explosive cast. Smites yet again, too early. And Beyond comes up with the Baron yet again. And they find the exit kills. And Spike Gaze comes through. They do two. lock in two. Actually, yeah, the poison able to take down ADD and Avatar. Cutting them off as Blank goes forward. Body slam out. Tempered Fate locking up he and Beyond. And this could be the ace. This could be it for SKT. They find Maha. They have the rest of the squad so close nearby. That and he even have Faber pushing through mid lane while they clean up the kills. Nowhere for the bard to go. Can't escort any minions in. I don't know if they can end the game here, SKT, but they're going to try. It's going to be damn close as Bank joins in. Faker already moving up the way, but look at the super creeps back in the base. Nobody is going to answer this. And Max is just charging down the top lane. Wolf will be hot on his heels. He's just trying to create a commotion. He has a Baron buff, remember? I don't think it's going to be enough. They're going to try and force it. Max falls back. He's buying some time. Wolf trying to delay this as much as possible, just not able to get it, but even then, Max does not have the tempered fate to keep these turrets alive. SKT, I think they might have finally done it. So long still on these death timers. So close. MVP, that's the game that they can feel damn good about at the end of the day. So close, but it's still not going to lead to it. I agree with you that Blank had probably his weakest performance of the year. Really interesting game to think about, just given how many different things happened. That kind of 